Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Urban Legends video. Another entry here based on your suggestions. This one suggested a little while back, I think it was on the last go around that I found this suggestion and so I kept this one in mind and it has to do with an urban legend that's pretty much tied to a location which makes it very very fascinating to talk about a lot of my urban legends are either done with people or with entities but in this case again it has to do with an actual location and it's one of the more well-known locations when it comes to the world of paranormal and supernatural type stuff so much so that it's been covered by Ghost Adventures, which I love that show. I mean, I've, I've watched it ever since its inception, and one of my favorite things was the Halloween special that they had a couple of years back. So I'm a continued fan of the show, so it was great to see this location there on the program. And what I'm talking about is the location known as Pavilia Island, which you'll see a picture of here. Now, don't let the peaceful, calm-looking, paradise-oriented aspect of this picture paint your mind a different way. No, um, there's this picture which makes it look all beautiful and pretty and so forth and then there's the actuality of the history of Pavelia Island and according to the urban legend status the stuff that people to this day will find including uh, supernatural entities, paranormal entities, visions, possessions, and in some cases even being able to uh, be harmed by some of the people or entities or whatever they are that are there on Pavilion Island. And in an even further stretch, um, one of the uh, furthest uh, aspects of the urban legend is the idea that a doctor, a mad doctor, one of those crazy Looney Tunes doctors, the mad scientist that seems to be the evil arch type found in movies, can still be seen there in Pavilion Island too. So, uh, what is Pavilia Island? Well, it's a location near and around Italy, specifically towards the northern part. You'll see a picture of it here. And it's an island in of itself. It's just a small island. Beautiful island, at least, again, from when it comes to its picturesque setting. But its history, again, is marred by so, so much uh, horrible things that have occurred. And this is stuff that's happened over hundreds and hundreds of years all the way back to the Roman era to give you an example and here's what happened um, when it came to this island it has because of its isolated nature it has at the very beginning has became a place where people were essentially rounded up and left there on the island for bad purposes and what I mean is this um, especially during the Roman era when there was um, a series of plagues hitting that area, then what the Romans did is, again, because of the isolated nature of the island, they took these plague victims and then they stuck them there, right on the island, and made it sort of like a makeshift quarantine island. This is not the first time it happened, though, because it would happen much, much later on, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes. But the Romans essentially started it. They placed several thousand people there, and they were quarantined on that island, and then essentially they were just left to die. I mean, th this is something where people were not really treated, they were not really cured. Uh, I imagine that at that time when it came to this plague, there probably was no cure, and it was just sheer luck if one survived but most likely they would just die. And because of the fact that, again, it's isolated, the people were, would pretty much just be left to fend for themselves. And so most likely they would all die together. This happened yet again when it came to the bubonic plague uh, there in Europe, also the Black Death. And what had happened was the island once again was reinstated for this purpose, so much so that um, it, it this time there were much more people that were given to that island, not just because of those that were suffering from the plague, but anybody who had any kind of sign of sickness is what the, is the way the story goes. So it became a place where if you had even just a slight cough or if you had something involving let's say a slight headache or any the kind of physical sign where people were saying oh no this person has the plague then that was it you were shipped off and then you were essentially left there to fend for yourself um, and 
if you made it, you made it. Uh, you could come back, although most likely most people that went there just completely died. And this was not something that was nice, too, uh, because the people that died there, they weren't buried. They weren't taken back to their family. Uh, I don't even think they were cremated. It's, instead, it's essentially they were thrown into a large pit on top of already other bodies is the idea and then they were set on fire I hopefully these people were not alive when that happened instead I'm hoping that they were already dead and they were just buried uh, and set on fire with all the other dead people but with the bubonic plague and the black death all this stuff that occurred the total estimates of how many people have died on that island is huge it's a hundred and sixty thousand people on that tiny island have apparently met their demise there how crazy is that to give you an idea of how large that number is the cowboy stadium the dallas cowboy stadium the at&t one that one on regular capacity houses of about eighty thousand fans so you would have to take two of those stadiums combined two stadiums were for those people and then shove them all into this island and then you have an idea of how many people were there there are so many bodies that were placed on that island throughout who knows how many years that to this day bones that were buried a long time ago somehow some way creep themselves up either through erosion or just through natural settings they creep themselves up from the ground and people still find them there in fact it's been thought to have that the place there is um, it, it like the ground doesn't feel right is how people place it because of there, be, uh, there being so many hollow bones right underneath them and then on top of that whenever the bones sometimes settle and then they get washed away they come back to the islands just because of the currents and so anybody that goes there they come across these bones on an almost daily basis just creepy what a creepy notion. Um, the, you have these bones, some of them being hundreds of years old, that just continue to wash up there on the island. So much so, in fact, that while the area surrounding the island has, uh, pretty ironically, a good sense of fruitful prosperity when it comes to fish, uh, the fishermen there kind of go towards the island to take advantage of the fish. Um, I, probably it's because there's so few people that do anything around that island and so that's why the f there's so many fish there but the fishermen have reported that they constantly on a daily basis come across bones in their net freaky freaky stuff wouldn't you say I mean this is the kind of stuff that that you would make it would make you wonder why would anybody be near that island but yes it, it did happen because in the 1900s in 1922 not only was the island already full of 160,000 people like dead bodies there but somebody decided you know what let's go ahead and we'll create a mental hospital there on that island which you'll see a picture of here so in 1922 a mental hospital was created so at this time instead of the island serving as a place to put plague victims instead this was an island that housed mental people the, the people that had the unfortunate mental illnesses that they could never recuperate from and again with anything involving an isolated island and the idea that people are having to deal with uh, people with a mental retardation sometimes so strong that one could imagine how difficult it would be to handle some of these people uh, because of its isolated nature there was a lot of a lot of news or a lot of suspected news about abuse yeah the kind of usual thing that we hear about when it comes to some mental hospitals where the patients are regularly abused or patients in some cases die because of the abuse that they have in the, given to them from the hands of some of the caretakers and also the patients themselves because of their mental status um, some of them they were the first ones to start to be receptive to the effects of the island because with all those people dead 160,000 people the notion of the urban legend comes from the fact that uh, you have ghosts or you have some kind of supernatural entities whatever they are that start appearing on that island because of all the pain because of all the suffering throughout all the centuries they started appearing on that island and the first set of people that were lukewarm or receptive to them were unfortunately these mental people but nobody would pay attention to their cries nobody would pay attention to their pleas 
about them seeing um, anything involving, you know, ghosts surrounding them, laughing at them, uh, ghosts torturing them, like, not, well, I guess you could say physically, but in most cases mentally, uh, because these tortured souls would, uh, again, you know, this is all according to urban legend, would poke fun at the fact that here you have some people that couldn't help themselves they see these things they know that they're not being seen by anyone else so it just becomes a continuing cycle of torture so you one can imagine what these poor mental patients went through and with the with the people there and the care staff not being really receptive to helping them out then the torturing and the pain just continued throughout the 1900s now the furthest urban legend status actually lies with what was called a doctor that was there at the hospital. I don't know if he was like the main caretaker of the hospital, the director, the chief doctor, whatever he was, but there's not even a name associated with him. But this is where it kind of takes a little bit more of a fantastical side. I'm not sure if this is really true or not, but I'm just placing it out there because this is what was what what comes from the urban legends. The idea is that the doctor, and again this is all tied to the remoteness of the island, he was one that actually do things, uh, took things the furthest. So there were those staff and everyone else that was abusing the patients, and then he took things yet to another level. Apparently what he would do is he would enjoy uh, the mad aspect part, fulfilling the mad scientist part that I was talking about earlier. And what he would do is he would take these patients up to the bell tower, which was a portion there of that hospital and he would take the patients and then perform lobotomies himself with a hammer and a chisel right there on the patients and the patients of course without any kind of, of overview without any kind of anesthesia or any kind of restraints they couldn't do anything else but essentially accept all the pain that was coming this way while the doctor was presumably enjoying all of this so this would happen for the longest longest time and the urban legend goes further by stating that um, even after so many years of doing this the doctor himself who became so mad and so insane at this point he himself in a weird twist and in a weird poetic way started to see what the victims what the mental patients there were seeing and this in turn made him go mad so he was seeing and he was witnessing all the visions or he began to all the visions all the crazy stuff all the um, ghosts and the apparitions whatever these things were there on the island he himself was able to start seeing them and once he did so he went mad so much so that he actually went straight up to the largest tallest tower that was there that's still there to this day on the island and then threw himself straight into the ground but the urban legend further goes and states that he did not die because of it no his 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 suffering was not to be over yet because while he was there dying or struggling to stay alive there on the dirt once he fell off the tower probably broke some um, bones whatever so he was incapacitated then the urban legend goes that a strange mist rose up from the ground who knows what this mist consisted of maybe it was all the plague victims themselves maybe it was the will of the um, of the mental patients whoever but the strange mist rose up from the ground and then actually choked the doctor to death and then not only that but the mist took his body and then walled it up somewhere there on that island. So if the urban legend is to be believed, the farthest part of the urban legend, then somewhere on that island, there is the doctor's body just walled up. Um, and that is it's like its makeshift uh, grave for the doctor. But yeah, the, um, with all of this pain, all this torture, everything that this island has gone through, there are those to this day that know about this like the ghost adventures crew and they go visit the island and this is an island that to this day remains very very remote and it's not traveled by anybody because everyone there in that area knows about the history and knows especially about what people can encounter if they stay but those that are brave enough or those that are stupid enough what they do is they go to that island and they kind of dare themselves to stay one night and the reports are nobody can do so the minute you stay there and you get on board you'll start hearing moans you'll start hearing voices you'll start hearing things screaming at you you can't really see them 
Um, you can't really feel them, but they can certainly see you and you're around this place and they're around you and all all it is is them whatever they are strange voices booming sounds knocks things moving uh, stuff going inside your head whatever it is they're all telling you to leave immediately and do not return in fact that was one story that um, has been cited there was a daredevil who decided to spend a night there on the island and he said that as soon as he entered the asylum he heard a strange loud booming voice somewhere inside the asylum telling him leave immediately and do not return and so that's what he did rightfully so um, he ran away as quick as he can and then that was it there are still stories to this day too of people owners of the island um, as crazy as all this history is um, you would it'd be hard to believe but this is true there are people that have tried to still build something on the island for example I think it was in the late 1900s like 1970s or so um, there was the idea of turning that hospital which of course is now vacated and has been vacated and abandoned for so many years now um, into some kind of hotel I know it's crazy like who would actually stay on that island without with all this history but that's the way it was done but the owners once they went there um, they immediately saw and felt or whatever uh, was occurring and then that was it they stopped and abandoned those ideas and nothing I mean that was it and then there was the uh, uh, notion that even to this day the um, Italian state is trying to auction off and this is since 2014 get this a 99 year lease of the island and the idea is if you lease the island if you're the owner of that island in other words you purchased a 99 year lease it still remains the property of the state of Italy but you essentially lease it from them you can start developing anything you want and that way um, you could start developing another hotel or you could start developing and finishing the hospital maybe bring it back to life whatever and it, of course um, there hasn't been much buyers when it comes to this but that's the notion that's the idea that there's still people that are trying to have this island uh, made into some kind of, of vacation or maybe some kind of touristy type location but that's insane um, no pun intended I don't think that this island um, based on its reputation and based on its history is gonna have anything as far as any chance of people coming over and spending any kind of night there crazy crazy stuff another story that's tied to this um, was there was a family that purchased the island I don't know what date it was but the story goes that they purchased a part of the island and they wanted to convert it not into kind of like a touristy place but more into like a holiday home of sorts one of those things where um, maybe during the summer that would be their home and then that way they could come in and then stay there for a little while each year but they didn't even last one single night because the story goes that their daughter's face that night somehow some way was split open so much so that she had 14 stitches that had to be done and so that was it that was done so so with all of this stuff all the history on this island what do you guys think the urban legends everything that's tied to the everything that I just mentioned have y'all heard of Pavilion Island, do you think that there's any chance that this island will have anything as far as future occupation? Again, to this day, this island is vacant. Nobody lives there. Nobody travels there. Only the people that are into like the supernatural stuff, the kind that they're wanting to um, take bets on to see how long they last on the island. Those are the ones that go there. The only ones that are even remotely close to the island are the fishermen and those are even the ones that take chances because of the bones that people still find. Uh, they want to take a chance at least that they can recuperate some of the, f uh, f uh, the fish that are there. So if anyone knows any other tales um, that's, w that's regarding the Pavelia Island, please post your comments, share them below. It'll be fascinating to hear if anyone, and this might be a little rare, but if anyone has any experience on that island too or know somebody that has experience on that island that's great stuff please post it below it'd be, it'd be great to hear all right everybody thanks again as always take care